again. I've come out this morning with my little GF1 fitted with the 14mm Lumix pancake lens. I've been out mm, two or three days this week because the weather has improved significantly. As you may be able to tell, we've got clear blue skies. And I've come down to the university campus in Liverpool to take some of my sort of favourite compositions. One of them is behind me here um, in infrared. It's the um, Easter break. It's a Saturday morning, quite early. So there's absolutely nobody around. I'm just looking for compositions that work, for me anyway. So here we are. Uh, we have the little Panasonic Lumix GF1. It's the white bodied version, which tells me that it's the infrared converted one. Uh, I have a standard black one as well, which I, I mean, I really do rate these little cameras. They're fantastic. No viewfinder, but that's a workaround. I can, I can get around that without too much issue, even on a day like today. I'm sitting in the shade at the moment, but there is not a cloud in the sky. Now, normally if I were doing infrared landscape work, I'd be looking for a day where we had typical cotton wool cloud formations. There is nothing today. What I'm going to do probably therefore, and what I have done um, earlier on this week, is to convert the vast majority to pure black and white. This isn't a full spectrum conversion, which means that um, if I want to give the impression of false colour, I do have to do quite a bit of work in post, which in itself is quite enjoyable. Um, it extends the editing time, of course. Um, but nevertheless, it's pretty enjoyable to do that. However, today, most of it is going to be converted to pure black and white. And with a sky like we have now, with literally no cloud cover, depending on where you are pointing the camera relative to the sun, you will either get a very, very dark representation, bordering on nearly pure black, or uh, the camera, if it's pointed in another direction, will render detail in the sky which, to be honest with you, is invisible to the naked eye. So it can be quite fun just seeing the end result, really. There's a whole range of architectural subjects to concentrate on, but what I'm looking for really is light and shade and differences in texture more than anything. I want highlights and I want shadows. I want dark shadows and clean, crisp highlights. So I think it's time we moved on. My intention is to show you some of the older buildings and a mix of newer ones. I want to try and take some shots of the Metropolitan Cathedral. I'm going to be the first to admit that it may not impress and interest everybody. So if I already sound boring, please don't worry about switching off or changing to watch another film. I won't be offended. <laughs> See you later. This is the Sports and Fitness Centre on the University campus. And I do love the way that those beams are angled. And with the sun reflecting off it, should be able to get some quite uh, interesting results. We'll see how it goes. want to show you exactly how close we are to the Metropolitan Cathedral. It's going to lend itself to some rather interesting compositions, I think.
behind me over there uh, in the sunlight, you can see some of the modern high-rise student accommodation blocks. And beyond those is the new uh, Royal Liverpool Hospital, which has been controversial in its build, but it is now opened and completed. But I want to show you the, I guess, mm, not sure about crowning jewel, but one of the uh, better known monuments and buildings in the university estate, and that's the Victoria Building. The university campus started out as a college in 1881, and it was granted a royal charter in 1903. This is a sculpture I've taken quite a few times in the past. Um, very modernistic, but the reason why it appeals to me every time is that, as you can see in the background, you've got the Victoria Building Tower, and depending on how you align your camera, you can get a shot of it through one of the holes in the sculpture. So we'll try one of that. Not sure if this is the right focal length lens to get this, but we'll give it a go. Over there you can see one of my favourite modern buildings in Liverpool, the Spine, home to the Royal College of Physicians, at least here in the northwest of England. But I just love the sort of snakeskin pattern that's been applied to those glass panels. Really good. Just thought I'd take a couple of minutes to sit by the, the spine with the old railway tunnel vent. Uh, Liverpool has this crazy mix of architecture. And from my personal perspective, I love the contrast between the two. It's not always easy to generate that in your photography, but nevertheless, it's something that um, I think can be quite successful. From here, we're gonna just walk around the corner and have a look at the new uh, Royal Liverpool Hospital and see what weird and wonderful angles I can get from just outside that. So here we are just across the road from one of the university buildings and right in front of me is part of the brand new Royal Liverpool. You'll have to forgive the traffic noise but that's the kind of shot that I want to get from down here if I can.
This is an interesting sculpture. Um, it's called Form A and it was done in 2017. Apparently inspired by the scientific work that's done in the university, uh, the research centre. Um, the thing weighs 4,600 kilograms and it's 10 metres high. Freestanding. And it's quite awkward to photograph because from the side it stands out quite well. I might try one from here actually. But also I think from side on it sort of disappears like so. Um, except if I go inside I might be able to get a shot from somewhere like this. So we'll try these next. This is part of the uh, Liverpool School of Medicine on the university campus. And it's part of the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, which in actual fact is the building just behind. And the LSTM, as it's known, I believe, was the first tropical medicine school in the world. But I love the way the old and the new have been blended here. So I'm going to try and get an image of that section where the two parts meet. Uh, just down the road there, you can probably see a black cylindrical object, which is one of the original Victorian boilers that used to heat the university buildings. But if I pan you around, you now get a fantastic view of the current generation building. Well, from the central courtyard by the Ashton building, which was, I think, built in 1913. Normally this place is thronging with students and visitors indeed. But I'm very happy with what I've captured over the past couple of days, and today's been another good day, I think. As I say, whether everybody will like these images is very debatable. Um, I hope some of you like at least some of them. But I think it just goes to show that sometimes we don't need to concentrate on the pretty picture. We can get some really quite unusual compositions by concentrating on angles, aspects, light and shade. Uh, infrared simply emphasises that effect, I guess. Anyway, from a very bright and sunny Liverpool University, I'm going to say enjoy your photography, everybody, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.